So last week, second of August, we saw some demos in David or shall we? extension proven's constant elastic search with an uppercase S. Caching output caching in the space. Today. Today, today, we have some demos, more demos, so many demos. From. Uh, I would like to demo uh, Orchard, Core Commerce, uh, Stripe payment. Stripe. <laughs> and we have demos from David. Uh, no, no, this time I I will just have a, a few words before Subwatch's demo uh, regarding Orchard Core Commerce. Good. Good, good, good. So that's status. This one. I push something. Uh, I push something on Thursday during triage. I need a security file just for people to know where to join if they have a security vulnerability to, to expose. We have the same file in Ultra Core, so I copy pasted the file. I just updated the versions saying we won't fix security issues for these versions. We'll fix it for the 110 one. Then Ultra Core. Sure, it's David when you choose himself. David and you choose, and you are very loud when you don't say anything. Oh, because sorry. The, the microphone is super sensitive, are you sure? Uh, sorry, my cat is purring in the background. Um, so, um, no, 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 but that is wrong. We were on the second, so starting from. Yeah. Starting from this one, excellent update, castle current date, reduce memory when loading settings of the key maintenance from database. So this one is interesting. It's not full spot right. It works, no, it doesn't work. Um, so Chantilly is optimizing some memory loading. Okay, we'll take a look at the PR. But what I want to know so this issue which has been closed if you read explanation here uh, the problem is that the database shared setting sources contains data for all tenants which in our case is 2000 tenants hence my comment which is i want to know what you're doing with 2,000 tenants. Uh, I'm sure we are all curious to know where are these tenants. Um, can carry. Maybe, uh, maybe the, the, I don't think so, Canadian, Statistics that can interesting. So that uh, add missing alert in the CPS page. 
okay. Um, I like to provide even triple it's been converting these to the element. So now should like the um, Trembolic editor. So this is just styling, I should pop it strap. Just styling, but you also remove rows. So what's the default size now? And then for the default with the wig editor, same styling, but But we are forcing semantic force such that there is no um, substitution of tags like divs being converting, converted to paragraphs. So that's the change. The rest is just uh, spacing. And same thing is in this one the field and the part, which are the two of them. Just worried about the rows five. I should speak the same, but it might look different. The editor takes care of that. So we delegate everything to the editor, even the size. Yeah. And but we don't delegate the semantic, right? Just it was forced before, so I'm wondering maybe it will look different now. Um, that, thank you, Mike, mock update. And, and, and Monaco Editor update, not a small update. Monaco Editor. to see what kind of improvements they're doing. Uh, what? Yeah, and that's available on NPM, but not, uh, there is no tag on GitHub. So if I look at the NPM. So really notes. Yeah, so you can look at the history of the commits we did. Which one? The one? In GitHub, you can look at the, the commits. Ah, that's bad. On every release, they should say what they implemented because there might be 10 commits for the same thing. Yeah. OK, there is a change log. Change log and it's there. Good. Uh, so we were in 32. So we don't care, but we don't care. We don't care. Fixes, fixes, fixes. New API. Nothing we care about, just uh, for devs to improve the or the languages and stuff. Just few. Yeah, it looks like more API. See, new APIs. And the breaking changes are for the API also. We fight. Okay. Up. Okay, good. So nothing special here, just a bigger hand bump. 
Um, what else? Nothing else. Then demos. Demos. We said uh, Shabbos want to do a demo. Please do so. Okay, uh, David, wouldn't you wanted to say something before my demo? Uh, yes. So uh, this is about the. Uh, progress on Orchard Core Commerce. One is that we have an announcement regarding uh, what will be in the MVP and like uh, the short term vision for the project. And uh, I've uh, pasted the link for that. So uh, feel free to uh, check it out and uh, uh, join uh, the discussion, especially in uh, some of the bigger uh, issues like uh, taxation and discounts and stuff like that where it's um, you know it, it uh, could be still further iron on that by uh, based on what's the uh, community requirements uh, and uh, the other thing i wanted is basically a question uh, are we going to so we would like to push it to nuget or uh, cloudsmith um, is would this be through the Orchard Core account? Um, definitely. So we can set it up the same way we have it in. Uh, OK. In, in this case, I will send you a conversation where uh, I. Uh, so basically, I uh, wrote down what uh, should be done to uh, set it up with user secrets if, uh, if that's the course of action. Yeah, I assume we can also copy paste most of the scripts we have. That. Mm. Yeah, I just uh, need to set up the, the secrets so it can be okay. actually. I can, I can update them, yeah. Thank you. I can find them. Here it's setting secrets. I won't show you, but even if I show you, you won't see anything. Um, okay, I can find the secrets like we have in the option. Yeah, uh, so I've added two properties with placeholder values and mm -hmm. you, you would just uh, update them. Yes. Uh, we call that nuget underscore API key and then cloudsmith underscore API underscore key, something like that. Yep. Um, someone joined. Small. Um, so yeah, so this issue, a survey to see what people want. Must be super interesting. Open that. Yeah, stop using set modules. Oh, so, good job. Good job. Uh, so, David, talk about that. Shabolx, you want to say to show it now? Yeah, yeah, sure. Thank you. Uh, I'm sharing my screen. Uh, so this is just a basic implementation. So it's without taxation and the shipping and things like that. But the base is working. So uh, I added a sitting here to set the Stripe API. Uh, these keys will be or, or they are uh, test keys that are publicly available, so I'm not afraid to show them because they are inside the readme too. Uh, so the admin can set the publishable key and the secret key. Uh, both is needed for Stripe to uh, work correctly. And now in the commerce, uh, Orchard Core Commerce, we have a content uh, type called product. I created two products for testing, uh, this one cheese. Uh, it's uh, five US, USD and 55 cents. Uh, and another one, bread. Uh, and we have uh, already implemented, so that it, it was uh, before here, before Stripe, it was here, the, the uh, shopping cart. Uh, yes, and if we go to the 
products page we can add them to the shopping uh, in to the shopping cart mm, i will add uh, bread here it will appear in, appear in the shopping cart this is just a basic implementation of the shopping cart it's only one user so if i log in with another user the shopping cart will st stay this way but it doesn't matter for now uh, yes i will add cheese too so we have two products in the shopping cart and now i can go to checkout uh, this is a basic checkout so yes no shipping no address field just a simple name email phone and this uh, bank card or credit card field uh, this entry comes from stripe from the stripe api so i type something here And now uh, on the stri in the Stripe documentation, we can find some credit cards. First, we can use a uh, one that we we declined. So this will not work. Yes, and uh, uh, Stripe even have some different cards with different error messages. So this one is uh, insufficient founts and we can get the error message from the API and we can display it here. Uh, so as you can see, uh, uh, our cart, our shopping cart is, uh, if we go back to the cart, it's, it's still the same way, nothing happened basically. And now I will try another one uh there is there is one that is that is working right away because it it doesn't require any authentication but uh now i will try a credit card number that will require an authentication a 3ds authentication If I want to pay, I can't pay right away because I have to. Uh, this is Stripe's own uh, 3DS own authentication panel. But if this would be in a in a real situation, the bank's authentication panel will will be would be loaded in. Uh, and now I can decide to fail it or complete it. So let, let's just complete it. And uh, it says the that the purchase is successful and it's completed. Uh, the email sending is not implemented yet, but the the uh, shopping cart conversion to an order is uh, completed. So if I go back to the cart page, it's empty now. And if we go to the content items, I can see as an order here. Uh, which have a lot of things, uh, mainly our products. This is the, these are the important ones. Uh, we can edit them, so the the quantity of them. We can't add new ones yet. So for now, we we can just only set the quantity. And here are some other important information like the kind of the payment and the amount, transaction ID, creation date, and the charge text, which is now just the payment for and plus the site's name. Uh, here's an order ID, which is just a generated number. Uh, and uh, these are these for the these are for the future, like the current status of the order and uh, other things like uh, uh, shipping data. Uh, here are two uh, address fields that contains name and other stuff. So yeah. Uh, so basically that's it. Uh, every situation is handled. So if the card is not working, it it, uh, it, it it will throw an error message for the user. Uh, 
I can also show that because this field is is a stripes field, it has some basic uh, checks. So I, I can't submit this because it, it's not completed. So this field is is handled by uh, the Stripe API completely. Uh, basically, uh, that's it, and I can show you some code if you want. Uh, a question, not for the code, but it's a feature that you have to enable, and then it plugs automatically to all to the cart, to the checkout process. Uh, the checkout is is activated with the with commerce, so I didn't create the I didn't create a separate feature for that. But we need to enable the the cart uh, the this session cart storage feature. This is an this is an already this feature already existed when I created the Stripe. Type Stripe in the features filter. Yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. Maybe uh, we should uh, we should add it so okay so it can be separately activated. Yeah, because maybe you don't want Stripe, so it should be yeah a feature with custom settings and integration and stuff. It's because maybe yeah. I just want paper. Maybe I want Stripe or paper. Yeah, good idea to put it put it in the in a feature. And you want you might want both too. You said yeah. something like both what? Oh, both. And like uh, if you want to accept a credit card using Stripe, but you might also want a PayPal at the same time. Yeah, that's what I said. Yeah, Stripe or PayPal and PayPal or all these yeah. things like direct credit card or whatever. So many options. Uh, yeah. Also, I want to mention that uh, uh, this uh, the the checkout front end it doesn't send any credit card information to uh, to our server or to the uh, server of the host. It uh, sends this uh, credit card data directly to Stripe through JavaScript and then just gets back the information that you saw in the uh, in the editor for the order. So it's uh, actually, you know, like no liability there. Yeah, that's exactly what someone would say if they were actually getting the credit cards. Yeah, but it's open source, so you know it can be audited. Sure. How do I know that this is the source that you are using? You might change it and deploy something, and then get sued into the dirt. So no thanks. I don't trust you. I'm gonna take my credit card. Um, cool. Thank you. Other questions? Uh, should I show some code or? Uh, nah, I don't think that's necessary. Yeah, it's it's a uh, pretty. Uh, it's it's so much. So yeah. What? It's just one field. It can just be two lines of code. I'm sure. Yeah. Um. I want to see a website using it. Like a real commerce, eventually, and on my commerce, eventually we'll see one. Or we ask Shane to use it, and then 2,000 websites are using it. Uh, good, thank you, uh, uh, Sabolch. How do I pronounce your name? David is easy, but yours. Uh, Sabolch, Sabolch. Yeah. It's pretty, you. pretty cl close what you said. Yep, Sabolch. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Um, good questions, comments. Good job. Okay, Mike wants to use it. Thank you. Eventually. Um, so I think that's it. Those are demos. Those are demos. Right. How will that work if you're using a different uh, um payment provider does the checkout will be modular or use the checkout from that 
payment provider or is it just now with Stripe? Uh, now we have only one payment provider, the credit card payment provider. I think that would be the only one working with uh, Stripe. Uh, I, I created more, I, I made the possibility to create more providers to if if we some if somebody wants to pay like with uh, cash in real life or something, and and we would have to uh, add the, the the payment to the order with a, with the different provider. Yeah, you need to do like we do for logging, which is every provider injects a button in some shape zone. So you list the provider, then you tell them, give me your shape, and they give you a shape that you inject in a zone, which will be for the user to decide how to pay. So if, if there is only one, you could just render it, but it's better to just render the list of options. Uh, and then yes, all the providers like Amazon, PayPal, Stripe will appear, and then the user will decide which one they want to, to click on and then go to a, different page or you render a different shape space on the one that was selected. We do that for login. So it should be, I think, the same for, for that. And all in different features with different settings. Obviously. One option that could be done is using a payment provider that doesn't use any payment provider, which would say, I pass my order, but I want to pay in at, at the store. So it reserves the the items and you just go pay. Yeah. And then you don't use any payment provider in that case. That's that's a, a different payment provider in this case. Yeah. But that would be easy to to implement to see if that works with two different payment providers or sure. you can make a fake one also that just sends money to that doesn't send money and doesn't record anything. Yeah. That same thing. But yeah. yeah, for e-commerce, if this, I, that's something that you not even like pay at the store because it's an e-commerce, like, oh, let me ship it to you. Yeah, sure, you pay at the store. Oh, thank you. Uh, and uh, same thing for cash or whatever. So Stripe is the best option today. But people doesn't pay, Google Pay, all these things could be added. And people will want to be able to add that to their uh, solution plus custom solutions for the, from their banks. That's custom. Good. No questions? Good then um, next triage Thursday. And I believe we start with Elasticsearch. Yeah, I'm almost done. Only thing missing is uh, the status that we have in Lucene to re-index everything. So I'm working on that part now. Uh, inserted back the background task because of that. Um, had a short meeting with Jean Thierry last night to think about things that we could do. And now I'm implementing something that just uses <clears throat> the last uh, item indexed in, in Elasticsearch. I'm doing a query just on Elasticsearch to find the last indexed content item. And okay. from, oh, to, from there, to, yeah. To continue indexation? Yeah, exactly, because I don't want to use a file on the file system to have the say, status of the latest. And do it in the database. Yeah, so it's just that it's a, probably, file, it's, it's a file with Lucene because Lucene is file based, so it makes sense to be the same scope as the Lucene index. But because it's Elasticsearch, you have two options either create a custom document in Elasticsearch with metadata that you can store, that's mm -hmm. the best thing, or on a database. And but we don't need to store, I found out this morning, because we could, we can ask. Elasticsearch to retrieve the last item that it indexed okay. by date. Then so good. then we just need to find the indexing task ID 
from that content item ID that it will return. So it's going to do a one SQL query on the database to find the content item that it needs to uh, know the, the indexing task ID that it needs to start with. Yeah, something like that. Okay. Having fun. <laughs> sure. Um, okay. Thanks, everyone. See you on Thursday or next Tuesday. Bye bye.